My apologies if I have done a video on this topic before. With all the videos I have on this channel with me blogging, I probably have. But in case I haven't, this video story started decades ago. Probably almost 25 years ago now. So what I'm talking about is my learning, I guess you could say the hard way, that it's best to get a black belt when you're a child and not try to get it when you're an adult. Can you get a black belt when you're an adult? Absolutely. You absolutely can. It's just a lot more difficult because of time and because of human nature. So, see, when you're a child, people have to behave on their best behavior if they're instructing you. They can't be hyper competitive with you or passive aggressively competitive with you when you're a child. If anything untoward or weird is going on, you should get more protection if you're a child. If you don't, the community comes to defend you against bad actors usually when you are a child. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, and what I'm talking about, I'm not even talking about the majority or even the vast majority of people who train adults. Because, of course, the the vast majority of martial arts instructors are just stand-up people. They are. That's one of the reasons why they're into martial arts. But there's, in, in any field, there's always a few bad actors that just annoy everyone else. And just mess it up. They just mess it up for everybody else. So, I don't want anybody to feel like he's talking about me. I'm not. I most definitely am not. I'm just talking about a few bad apples I ran along on the way, which obviously weren't enough to determine from the journey. So this is where it starts. Long, long time ago, my friend, who I will not mention by name because, you know, I don't want Internet people bothering him. He is a very good internal martial artist. He knows who he is. Very strong with the... Tai Chi, Shingi, Bagua set of uh, groupings of martial arts. That, some Western boxing, I think is his background. And he's smaller in stature than me, but he generates enough power that it's like he's smaller than me, but he can easily handle somebody my size just because he's really good with his technique and his internal um, rounding. So... We were roaming together at one point and I started thinking about, you know, I really want to get back into the martial arts. I really want to get back. I see you practicing in the morning, man. And I started practicing. I was practicing by myself and I was going through the only form I know. And he was like, well, you know, why don't you consider the internal arts? And I was like, yeah, I think I'll try that one day. But I want to, you know, I want to finish out what I started out first. Right. He's like, well, Cecil, you took it. I, let's see if I can remember this word for where he said you took karate as a kid so you were probably blind to the sadism or you were probably sadistic yourself because you were a kid I was like what was what's, what's sadism what 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 are you talking about and so obviously I was blind to he said you'll see you'll see so when I first started back any type of like egregious or excessive force I think the first place I went, I really just didn't see it because people would say stuff like, oh, it's oh, did you come along back in the 80s? Oh, well, it's different now. We can't, we can't we can't do like we did back then. It's a lot different now. It's a lot different now. But eventually, I as I had to go to different places. And like in my mid to late 20s and 30s, I moved around a lot because job changes, family changes, that type of thing. And that tends to be a, a time in your life where you probably don't stay in one spot for a long time not like when you get over the like mid 30s hump to now where like I just live in one spot pretty much forever around that time in life you, you, you know you just, it is what it is 
it is what it is. You stay where you can stay because of the price or whatever. You find a better place that you can stay, you know, better neighborhood, yada, yada. You move. You want to move because of a job, whatever. So this is what I found. You have bad actors in the martial arts. They're going to feel like, and some people don't even think this is bad actors. They think this is quality control. Okay. So let's let that be known. They're going to feel like if you can't fight, you don't deserve a black belt. Now, I bet you a lot more people feel that way than are willing to admit publicly, but they're going to feel like, if, especially if you're a man, if you're a grown man and you can't fight, you shouldn't have a black belt around your waist. So that means sometimes when you are sparring, you're thinking spar, that other person is really trying to see if you can fight. They're really trying to fight you. You're sparring, you're thinking, oh, we're, you know, you think we're just playing pity pat or, you know, we're just grappling. This other person might be trying to really not just choke you out. They might try to break a joint or something or do some damage. And I can't say this is just one style because I've trained in a few different styles. I've just seen these these folks show up once in a blue moon period. Doesn't matter whether it's striking, doesn't matter whether it's grappling, doesn't matter whether it's traditional, doesn't matter whether it's modern, doesn't matter whether it's this or that. You got people out there that feel like if you can't fight, you don't need to be here. And they sticking to it. And now at the same time, if that's the kind of club that they run and if you want that, then you should go there and y'all can, you know, y'all can thump on each other together. I call it thumping. Y'all can get some thumping going on all together. Well, I know what I've had, what I've done, I've been guilty of this and I've been chastised for this too myself. If you can work out with a person that doesn't mind the higher level of contact, it's like you, you'll find each other out. If they don't mind, then you can work with that person and you guys can go at a higher level of contact or a higher level of intensity than most people. But there are a lot of people that really don't want that high level of intensity. And where it comes back to kids, where it's better as being a, to, earn as, to learn as a kid, is usually if you're a kid, the intensity may not necessarily be that bad or be at a super high level unless you're at a tournament or something. This can give a, ch a child that really needs to learn how to fight and just really isn't that good at fighting. If they're in the right environment, they can progress and build up and grow their skills, even if it takes a long time, to an environment where they can really be competent at defending themselves. And also, if the child is in an environment where there's a lot of thumping going on and the parent doesn't like that, since it's a child and you're a child and you tell your parents you don't like that, especially these days, you have a lot more options because your parents probably know some place where they can take you so that you don't have to deal with all that. You can find a place. Now, when you're an adult, see, it's hard to, to find out or scope out what type of clubs and environments. It's a little bit harder, in my opinion, because you have to work. You got to go to work. So that means you got to take care of your work responsibilities. If you have a family or something like that or any other adult level responsibilities, you got to handle all those responsibilities in addition to trying to find a martial arts environment that you feel is right for you. And that just takes time. Now, in the long run, an adult will be able to, to do it easier, but it's just going to take more time just for the fact that nine times out of 10, if you're grown, you got to work. If you're a child, you can ask your parent. And then while you're going to school or doing your other activities, mommy and daddy is the one that's looking around for a place where they feel like you'll fit better. And the place just shows up for you because they've done that legwork. They've done that investigation. So there is that. Second reason why it's better and to get the black belt as a child, if you can, is what I was talking about with an adult time. You don't have to work full time job when you're a child. You can say, I want to do this and somebody else pays for it. Somebody else gets you all the stuff that you need. 
they're making all the sacrifices for you. Only thing you sacrifice as a child is your your time and energy. And you have time. And typically, if you get injured as a child, the injury is probably not going to be as bad and your body is still growing and you can heal. You get injured as an adult, which I have, and you got to go through recovery, whatever it is. I haven't had any super bad injuries, but bad enough. Like going to work the next day. And this was I was small with one guy and it didn't bother me because like. I mean, I was in the level of intensity we agreed upon, but then like the next day I'm thinking, ah, this ain't going to be nothing because I don't have a real physical job. I got a desk job. But then if I'm leaning on my desk to reach something, if I lean on something that is still a little bruised or sore from when I was, you know, mouth sparring or whatever, I feel that. Then you, then, you know, people see like, especially if you blocked a kick and the person's fingernails were a little sharp there or their toenails were a little sharp there. Yeah, you get these scrapes on your arm. If you still do conditioning, now I cut back on it. Just cracked my knuckles when I did that. I don't know if you heard it. I just, I had cut back on the conditioning I did. I've done as an adult because I don't really need to do it now. But I remember when I went back to do conditioning because I was gearing up to do breaks. Some people notice those dark knuckles. And like, uh, and you know, that was the first time it really hit me was I'm working in like an office corporate environment and I got dark knuckles. So one of the security was like, what's wrong with your hands? Well, what, why are your hands? Why are your knuckles so dark? I was like, it's my pigment. And like, and since the other person was black, they, that didn't scare them. <laughs> like, nah, bruh, try it again. Why are your knuckles so dark? I was like, okay, fine, fine. And if you tell some people why your knuckles are dark when you're conditioning them and, you know, you don't put dit that jowl on it to try to ease that up or use some cocoa butter to restore the, you know, the discoloration. You got a few people that they hear that conversation, they're going to automatically think, oh, my gosh, she's violent. She's violent. And they may shy away from you. So there's that. I also have stopped conditioning because it was attracting negative attention from sadistic adults. So I just pulled back on that. Fortunately, I got the bone density anyway, so you know I don't have to do it as much anymore to really keep that up. And conditioning is something that you're probably not going to do if you're a kid. So that's another reason why it's good to get a uh, to get a black belt as a kid. You probably aren't going to be expected to put up with really high levels of pain tolerance and pain conditioning. Because you're still growing, so that's not appropriate for you. But if you're a man in or near his prime, people expect you to be able to take a punch. Even if you're not doing something like Kyokushin, there's still some kind of low level conditioning that goes on. Even if you are sparring without equipment, there, there, that's to me, that's still some type of conditioning because sometimes you're going to clash things a little hard. And those little micro fractures are still going to toughen up your bones. Also, it's better to get a a black belt as a kid. Because people aren't allowed to be ist against kids. Sexist or racist or classist. If whatever your demographic is, you come, you encounter a group of people that don't like that demographic. They could be trying to heat up, turning the heat up on you and sparring because they don't like that demographic. And what I found is it's usually not the whole group. It's special bad actors in some of those groups that hide their bigotry from everybody else because everybody else probably won't tolerate it. Everybody else wouldn't tolerate that bigotry, but that person may have a problem with you. Like if it's somebody that doesn't like the fact that they're women in martial arts, so they may go a little bit harder on a woman than they would even if it was a guy or a woman that doesn't like that. There's guys in the martial arts, so they may be trying to kill a guy to get the guy to get rid of them, etc., etc. Now, I used to not really believe that at first, but then, well, I guess I can say this. I saw a, I'll just say, just because just I don't want to get canceled. I saw a minority that I am not. 
That's, that's, that's all I'll say. It was a minority group that I'm not. And I saw that that group had formed their own federation. And I was like, I was looking at them and looking at some of them, like, they look pretty good. I don't know why they feel like they would need to form their own association. They look pretty skilled to me. But like, what, you know, I think they could just hang with everybody else. And then I had an instructor at the time that was a member of that minority that I was not. And I asked that instructor who was a, minor, a member of that minority that I am not. It's like, do you feel, is there, is there really discrimination going on? I mean, cause I, I really don't know. Cause I just, you know, wherever I've worked out at, you know, for the most part, you know, people just train and nobody really cares. And the instructor replied, no, it's, it's real. You just haven't been paying attention to it. Cause you don't think like that. Just start, start paying attention to it. And then I started paying attention to it and it was like, whoa, what? And, um, then when I had to, I had to leave that instructor because like just family obligations, kids were getting older, need more of my time. So I had to find something that fit my schedule better. So then when I went school shopping and I found a place and I was like, oh, it doesn't look like, uh, doesn't look like there's a problem with my, uh, group being accepted here. I see all kinds of, I thought I was seeing all kinds of people together because that's what it looked to me looked like to me but there was a particular demographic that I was missing and I just kind of mentioned it and they were like oh no yeah no we don't like that in here no mm -mm, no no they all all of them were doing that so that's telling you right there this is not this particular demographic it's not something that you can visually see even though they are a marginalized group in our society and I was just like, what? I was stunned. I was like, what? Like, why would you even care? Like, when is that even going to come up? Like, who? What? What? And they were all like, no. Nah. Nope, nope, nope. Don't want that here. Nope. And it was like, you know, I'm not in that group, but I, oh my God. I, I, I don't feel comfortable being around people that, that feel like that about it. And fortunately, they made me, they got rid of me right after that. They were telling me, well, look, you you said you can't attend more than once a week and we don't want that there. I was like, all right, maybe they're just using it as an excuse because they think I'm part of this, this group. I'm not saying so fine. I'm just going to go someplace else around some people that are rational and sane, which ended up working out because wherever I've got my black belts, they don't care about that. Everybody that's ever granted me rank past uh, it's shown on and beyond and people who just like, can you do it? You show you can do it. You get your rank the end. And they, they, they diverse, very diverse. So don't even have to worry about that. But see, when you were a kid, right, it was a kid that may have been part of the group that I'm not naming. See, our society is going to be like, no, no, you can't do that. The community will rally. But it's like when you're an adult and, hey, you know, you're on your own, buddy. Hey, bye, bye. You know, you don't like it. Just, just you know, just, you know, you don't like the heat. You don't like the heat in that kitchen. Find another restaurant. So that's why. People have to be, I've said a lot. This thing is getting long, so I'm going to end it. But I could have just summed it up like this. See, when you when you are a child, people teaching you have to be on some act right. They have to be. There's more eyes. There's more accountability. When you're a child. From instructors. But when you grown, as quiet as it's kept, this is just a fact of life. Eh, you know. They're supposed to be on some act right. But not as much. So thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Be sure to people like to talk, talk, talk about the martial arts and peace. Now, just now, let me make it clear here. I'm I'm calling attention to a minority of people who make things bad for adults. At least when you're an adult, you can recognize that, and you can do like I did when I ran into it. Jump ship. Don't don't stay on that boat. Okay. Don't stay on that boat.
There are plenty of boats that you can be on that will sail you to the seas that you want to go to in the martial arts. So in summary, you know, when you're grown, you have to pay for it yourself. It's your time and energy. Uh, you get injured, you can't take a day off from school or whatever. You're still going to have to go to work with those injuries and you got to plan and modify yourself accordingly. But it's still worth it. And then another thing, too. Once a lot of those get black belts, they're going to stop coming because, uh, you know, if they're working, they can make money working instead of coming to class. Peace.